Hi ladies, this video was being filmed without my knowledge in a manner of speaking. I just finished the Lent video and I spent all that time doing my OCD thing with the Lent only to realize tonight when I came back to edit that video and put it up that it was two hours and I'm like, what the heck, how's this two hours? So I realized that the video was still rolling. So I decided it's organic, just let you guys see it. So you'll see me obsessing over the lint, pulling the lint out. I'm having a conversation with my daughter. She's talking about some type of transformation and some dieting. And then I actually get an order from one of you guys on the channel that gets booked while I'm sitting there on the phone uh, looking at, I guess, listening to some of the videos or doing something with the channel on my phone after I finish picking the lint. And um, I just thought, just go ahead and let that be up there. You guys can really see how crazy I am about <laughs> this lit stuff y'all always see. Oh, and by the way, let me show you this. Y'all know uh, it's been about five weeks since I put these two little ones in, right? Uh, if you watch all the videos, you'll see. But you may not. I don't remember which one it is because sometimes I make a lot of videos. I don't upload them right away. It was looking like this, okay? It was bigger than this one. It was bigger than this. I didn't like it, so I separated it out and I did my own two little locks and it's been about five weeks now, I think. This one's holding really good. It was trying to do that little budding, budding thing at the bottom and I, you know I handled that because I don't want any closed ends. And this one here is loosened up. It was trying to come out, so I had to um, keep pulling down from the root and keep tightening. But uh, this is what it's looking like so far, and I'm kind of excited because I expected them to totally go out, but they didn't. So anyway, on to this video. This is not to be me talking. You know, I talk a lot. That's why I have so much fun with the channel. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to go on and let you see the, the locket, the thing, and, and uh, you can uh, hear me as I get one of my orders from one of you guys. You did a booking, and by the way, I totally enjoyed the service and meeting you and loving on you and receiving love. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Oh, my goodness. This is just, like, so bad. Nye, how was school today? Nye. Yeah. How was school, baby? Oh, you just finished work on a project. Cleaning out my car as well. Oh yeah, now you must said you were at the um the I had said Never Neverland is up the street. Huh? I didn't see it, but never apparent Neverland. you no, never I were. Never Neverland. Oh. Is that that was Michael Jackson's place, right? Yeah. I uh the parent who came and did a, a session this morning, she said she was taking her son and his friend over there, I think. So they here already. Can you see it from the highway? No. Where in the plaza is it's it? Right across from the. Um, it's right across from uh, the old Target. Oh, That's they got that whole right area. Down, yeah. That residential plaza. I guess they needed a big place, huh? 
You said, oh, it's across from there. It's inside the, the residential plaza? It's not in the, where the old Target is. No, 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 no. Oh, so you can't really see it from the highway anyway. Hmm. Okay. So far, I'm not really that hungry. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Oh, how you doing with that, nah? And you didn't eat anything since like yesterday? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, I don't know. Maybe it's easier than a lot of people think it is. Oh, I don't know. I guess it depends on your frame of mind. See, you're pretty psyched up about it anyway. Yeah. Maybe by the evening or tomorrow. Just, just to keep drinking plenty of fluids. That's not us, uh, Sophia says she made them for a deal. Sorry. I know. If I get through these 10 days, Mommy, I can do anything. I agree. It's definitely a, a, a task in self discipline. It sure is, because make you go inside. When you don't eat and you don't have that to take up time and focus things on you, you can listen to your thoughts and really feel, feel yourself. Yeah, this is the change that... You go see how much of a distraction food is to us, too. Yeah. We use it to, like, this not have to think about... Oh, change. <laughs> was that Obama? Who was that? Yeah, that was Obama's mo uh, his slogan. Was well, a change you can believe in. But really, this is the change that I'm going to need to jumpstart my life again. Yeah, that's Stop why you. Like I've, I've been on pause. No, it's just I know you ain't been on pause. Mentally though. But mentally. you're just going in a new direction. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a great way to get psyched up. My car's really clean. Yeah, see that's see that's a big thing because yeah. you're decluttering basically you're decluttering your body now. Yeah. Physically you're decluttering. Yep. That's really what this is. It's a physical decluttering. Yeah, don't expect it to always be that way, but you'll be prepared because you'll you'll make the adjustment. I'm gonna get through this. But you, the worst part of it is this weekend, and you're home, so you have a chance to kind of push through it. Yeah. Then, as you get the first set of toxins out, you're gonna feel energized. Yeah. You will Did your feel. Research. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just know how fasting works. I've I've read a couple books on it. I have a few books on fasting on my iPad because when I benefited from it few summers ago it was no joke I feel like I healed a lot of stuff but as soon as I start to eating that junk again and eating that drinking that milk and eating that stuff all my pains came right back yeah so if you can use it to change your life well I'm gonna chill for the rest of the day and read some books and I'm supposed to eat so I have something for Serena in a little while yeah. Which, oh, the, um... I'm supposed to go to the vegetarian restaurant, but I told her, since I'm not eating, you know... Oh, she knows that you're, that you're doing this? Yeah. Yeah, it's no fun sitting in front of food if you're not eating. Yeah, so we decided we're just going to go to the movies. There's a lot of new movies out every week. But, uh, yeah. This is, uh, transformative, Mommy. I don't know. I'm so excited. I don't know. I'm just so excited. I don't know what it is I'm excited about. Because you're doing, you got, you, you, um, on a mission. Yeah. Yeah. You, you feel like you got something, you're doing something purposeful. And my reward to myself is if I make it through 10 days, I'm going to reward myself. Oh, you're doing 10 now. I thought you was doing, uh, five or six. No. Oh, hell. You're uh, doing 10. If I 10. make it through 10 days, I'm going to buy myself a new outfit. I'm oh. not going to reward myself with food. That's what we always do. Yeah. I like that, not rewarding ourselves with food. Just give ourselves a reason to go eat some junk that's not healthy. Yeah. We And we do that very well. That, and that sounds fun. Yeah. If I make it through, though. What's water up to this weekend? I don't know. Probably have to work or something. Huh? I said she probably is working. Mm -hmm. You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
It looks like the drive through is smaller, though. Yeah. I guess they wanted to give people more space to park because the place is always packed. Yeah. But the drive through yeah. Oh, with the lady? Yeah. It's Chick-fil-A. It's about Chick-fil-A going global. And we have to persuade them. They're going global for real or y'all making it up? Well, actually, yeah. They've expanded. They're opening a location in Canada. Um, oh, they don't have Chick-fil-A's in Canada? Mm-mm. And so our, our proposal is to persuade the Chick-fil-A corporate to um, expand into three top destinations globally. Anywhere y'all want? Um, no. Our, we pick the top tourist destination. And what are they? So we pick Do y'all have any place in Africa? Uh, no. Africa always gets left out. Why has Africa got to be left out? Well, well, we left some other continents out too. Um, but no, we chose Hong Kong because that's the, it's like, busy. It's the hub of Asia, yeah. And plus I've been there so many Do they eat a lot of chicken? Yeah. So it would be easy to present, present my case. Plus McDonald's has done well there. So if McDonald's oh, really? Oh, yeah. There's a McDonald's on every corner. What? So well, how's the menu different? So they'll have the regular stuff on it, but then they've added a few little things to make it kind of like... Hong Kongy. Yeah. Like, what, they have noodles? <laughs> no, no, they don't have noodles, but they have this red bean, all these red bean flavored pastries and the cafe section, because they love, Hong Kong loves red, red beans and green matcha tea. So they have like flavored cheesecakes, they have, um, and they made the, the, the burgers and stuff a lot more fancier and stuff. So it's like to cater, kind of cater towards the Hong Kong residents. Um, and so we're going to do that for Chick-fil-A. And our other location is Rio de Janeiro and London. So um, this is going to be kind of interesting. We have to actually contact the co- corporate headquarters in Atlanta. Oh, y'all have to actually do it? Yeah, we have to, well, we have to like set up an informational interview. So y'all, will they let y'all come in and just do that? No. Oh, y'all going to lie about it? She's not going to know. She didn't even check behind the person I interviewed. Y'all going to make it look like y'all did? But what if, what if y'all... We called, we called them and... What if she... What if y'all get caught? She's not going to know. Mommy, every, for all of the 40 students who did their informational interviews, half of them didn't even actually contact the person they were supposed to interview for the previous project. Did she give y'all the I names of who to contact? No. You pick anybody you want. And she didn't look into it. All she cared about was how our presentation looked, our content and stuff. What makes her think people have time to talk to y'all anyway, or that they would uh, be even open to? I think it's a don't ask, don't tell type of situation. Well, she just saying it, but she knows that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she knows that not everybody's going to actually do that. So, because a lot of the students I talked to who did the previous project, you know how I had to interview the lady from the Department of Education? Mm Mm-hmm. A lot of the other people didn't. Did you actually do that too? Yeah. How did you get in touch with her? I got her. And you talked to her? And they had her email, yeah, and I emailed her, and then she said, yeah, come in, and uh, we'll do an interview. So she's right downtown? Yeah, and I talked to her. So what kind of questions did you ask? Um, I asked her what are some things that she wished she had known now, uh, that she had known back then. And so what did she, she know say? now that she had wished she had known back then before she started her career. Um, I asked her about her experience. What did she say when you, when you, um. She said experience is everything. She said, she said, um, stellar grades are not even, they're like, they're merely the first step securing a, a career that you want. She said, really, it's all about experience. Oh, and like like an internship? Not or... just internships, but just job experience in general. Having those skills like that you get from working. Oh, that's what I, she said? Yeah. Like she said, because she works, um, she does like accounting and auditing and stuff uh, for school departments. And um, she said that uh, her, it's really her experience is what got her to where she is now. Really? She worked in different districts and she made sure she got as much experience as possible in that field and she said it's just you know I, I didn't really like I was like oh wow it's all stuff that I knew and but she like, welcomed you in huh yeah I had to, yeah then I had to give a five minute speech on what I learned and stuff to her or at school? No, to, to school so how did the lady how much time did you spend with her I only spent like 15 minutes with her and she was okay and she gave you information and then you left yeah, huh yeah so um wow I mean, with the Chick-fil-a thing it's gonna be like we couldn't even get somebody on the phone 
Because just like you call in corporate, right? Yeah. Um, but you have to, like, it's complicated. But we're so you have to try. tell them you're from the school and hope that they'll yeah, talk to you. We're going to try, and if it doesn't work out, we love your information. What, yeah. Whatever happened with the kid that uh, dropped the class? Our professor still doesn't know that he dropped the class. Did she give y'all an extension that you no. said? Did you ask? Did y'all ask? Yeah, yeah. She What'd she say? She said the deadline still apply. Ooh. You said you was gonna go complain. You just decided to drop it. Yeah. Like, who has the energy, right? Yeah. And I just didn't. <laughs> like, okay, who no, has the energy? Might as well just drop it. And in the end of the semester, I'll have an opportunity to evaluate her. And when I do. Oh yeah, people are gonna rip her to shreds. Yeah. That'll be the best time to deal with her. You don't usually talk to people like that, yeah, so. She's, she's horrible. And she's really, she's sarcastic, too. So she's not very she's just, hu human. She has, she has some issues. Not human, but her sense of humanity and compassion. But she gives me decent grades, good grades, actually. Like, I got an A on my presentation. She doesn't give you anything. You earn it. Yeah, I earned it, yeah. You earn it. She doesn't give you anything. A little tired, lightheaded. Yeah, and the funny thing is we interpret that as hunger, but what that is is the toxins. It's actually the sugar cravings and stuff and the carbohydrate cravings moving through you and you being your body being cleansed. I'm not that's, interested. That's the worst part of it. Who is it? Some guy I used to work with. I guess he still had my number. Oh, he was interested in seeing you? He's like, hey, would you like to hang out sometime? Oh, who is that? Is he white, black, or what? From where? When I used to work at a rec center. Rec center? Yeah, at the Georgia State Rec Center, remember? Oh, yeah. Was it, oh, at Nam was oh, he couldn't get a job there, right? Yeah. He tried. Because he was too silly. Oh, you think that's what it was? Yeah, he probably bought him the interview because he looked too silly. It's probably like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, who is this clown? Yeah, yeah y'all were competitive. That was another sign. That's not good either. Yeah, in our grades, we used to compete because we had some of the same classes. Oh, we were kind of strong on that one. That competitiveness can be destructive, though. Yeah, it can. And I don't know what we were competing about when we, used to, we had completely different, different classes. Yeah, y'all not even on the same. Yeah, it's, it's not even. Like, who can get, I don't know. Just, I don't know. <laughs> it's, that's them. This lady has not responded to me about paying that invoice and responding to what my outline is for tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get these folders and put these folders and stuff together if I haven't been paid. And she has not responded to my me contacting her. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm wondering. We, we had lunch last week. We talked. I sent her the invoice yesterday. I don't know. What's going on? I'm going to call Monique now. Who is she? There's a, a, a lady friend that Monique worked with who's planning this event, and I don't know, it's like, you better tell me something, because normally I would want to be working on what I'm going to present, mm -hmm. but uh, I can't do that if I'm not going to if the payment is not in place. color has made the, the cotton show up even more. Hmm? You talking to so uh nah?
That's when you, I know, and you, that's what makes you say, okay, I'm just going to eat healthy now. I don't have to starve. I'll just eat healthy. Yeah, and then you don't. And then you sabotage, yeah. That's that little voice of sabotage. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Naima, don't think about it. You're sabotaging. Don't think about it. I'm pulling out all my curls. Not meaning to, but did you see our neighbor's little dog out there? He's still in the street. Have you seen Aunt, um, Amira's place down there yet? Yeah. What's it like? It's a cute little spot it's right across from our school building. Has, has she seen you? Uh, oh, I've seen Selma. Oh, you yeah. saw Selma? Yeah, she hasn't seen me in a few Okay, who, who hasn't? Selma or Amira? Okay. okay, so Selma's working the new place? Yeah. So she's working at both places, huh? Yeah. I guess she's pretty busy. How's she doing now? I need to get Joe to get over there. Yeah, this lady has not texted me or anything. I haven't heard from her. That's not a good sign. And it's ir actually, it's irresponsible that I've contacted her and she hasn't responded. Who, the lady? Yeah. I don't even like the sound of that. That's organizing the event. It's her event. Maybe it's a money issue because she was doing all this out of her pocket for these people. I don't know, but I'm going to text my girlfriend in a minute and see if she knows what's going on.
Uh, with Sophia, I went up to, no, with you, I went up to 153, which wasn't so bad, or 158. With Sophia, I went up to 187 or 183. It was bad. I, 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 I couldn't even, oh, my God, I was like a size 16. Oh, hell, all I got to do is go back and look at them. By the time I went to Ayeyu's that summer, I was fat and depressed. And she took me shopping, and I bought some really nice outfits, which helped make me feel a little bit better because I felt horrible. I was really big at that time. And, you know, when you get like that, you, you just don't take care of yourself as much. And you're just huge. I mean, I was huge. Well, what happens is in breastfeeding burns 500 calories a day. Yeah. But the thing is, it makes you hungry and you raid the refrigerator at night for carbs and stuff. So you breastfeed, it burns calories. Some people lose weight just with the breastfeeding, but it also increases your appetite. It makes you eat more, you know? So while it's helping you, it's also, if you're not on top of it, you end up picking up weight. Yeah. I don't even feel like making anything. But I'm just going to do a salad and soup anyway with Serena. So, so that was what, 60 pounds from your second? Oh, yeah. Now, you remember, like 25 of it is the baby anyway. So when you leave home from the hospital over the next couple of weeks, you lose some of the weight. You lose the majority of it. But if you eat like a maniac, you put it back on. If you don't eat like a maniac, the breastfeeding will help you lose the weight. That must be really hard, though. It is because you're up late at night. You got a lot of stress because it's, it's all, all of it's a new thing, Those you know. Oh, no, they, they gain weight. And these people got money and they got help. And then not only that, from what I hear now, a lot of these people aren't really having these babies. They're paying surrogates. Mm -hmm. And they're acting like they're having a baby by wearing these fake, um, yeah, making people think it. And that's why they can get back to their normal body because they pay these people millions to have these children for them. Some of these stars ain't having these babies. Not like they want us to think they are. Then they have us trying to keep up and feeling all less than this and that because we can't look like they look when they're faking it anyway. That's what I was told. Does it sound to you, Yeah, it is. The first uh, first three months, you're throwing up all the time. That's not fun. You feel crappy. You feel real sleepy. But months five, six, and seven are great months. You have a lot of energy. That's when your skin starts glowing. You look radiant, especially if you've gotten rid of the morning sickness. You have a lot of energy and you feel great. But then right around month eight and nine, you start feeling tired again. You get a lot of indigestion because the way the baby's situated, when you eat, even though you don't eat a lot, you get a lot of indigestion. Mm -hmm. And it's very uncomfortable. And then around that time is when you start going to the bathroom a lot. So every hour or two, you're in the bathroom. And at night, it's worse. So you're not sleeping well. By month nine, you're, you're not getting any sleep. Mm. And so you're tired. By then, you're big. Your back is hurting all the time. You try to wear them supportive holes to help your back pain and discomfort because the baby is so heavy. Sometimes it helps. Other times it doesn't. Your face starts swelling up. Now you look ugly. Oh, <laughs> you don't look cute like you did during month five, six, and seven. You're blowing up. Some people get the marks all over their skin. What? Yeah, some people's nose spread. Their nose gets real big. I didn't have that, thank God. Oh, my God. Wait. Your feet swell. So now <laughs> you wear, if you wore a size 7, you're going to be a size 8. Then your ankles start getting big, especially if you start swelling up and holding water weight. It can be really bad. Mm. Yeah, and you can't eat. So By now, your husband stinks. The house stinks. Yeah. Everything. Orange juice makes you want to spit up. Cumin spice used to just almost make me vomit. How dare a man ever demand anything during this time? Right, okay. How dare he? Would you be surprised? Sex gets good during my month five, six, and seven. What? Mm hmm. You find all kind of creative positions. <laughs> I'm serious. You have a drive. You have a real drive. Oh, really? Yeah. You have, because you're still alive, you still have needs.
Just because you're pregnant, you ain't dead. Oh. Yeah, that's the deal, girl. I better text uh, Monique and see what's up with Chrissy. much goddamn plant. This is just, oh my god. I'm just going to have to put some grease on this because it's just too much. What is a girl to do? I'm so glad I only had kids by one man. Oh. Oh my God. I never wanted to have kids by, like, you know. I know. So all my kids by one person, that's enough. Who? Cool. Who is it that looks so unhappy? Is it like a singer? Yeah, you know Justin Bieber? Yeah. Yeah, he recently got married. Oh, who did he marry? Some girl. Oh, oh, you know Alec Baldwin? Yeah. Alec Baldwin is nice. Really? Haley Baldwin. Hmm. She looks just like him. They look alike? Yeah, this is her. I don't know if you can tell she's related to him. Let me see. So, do they look happily married? No, they don't. Oh, they don't? Mm -mm. Oh, she's cute. Yeah, she is. She looks like she's kind of fresh, though. Fresh and sassy or too grown for her age. or well, she Just look like, like she's been around the block several hundred times. She's like in her 20s or something. I don't know. She looks kind of... How old is he? Let me see him. He looks so bad now. They got married recently. Is this a picture? Y'all think it's a result of the public? marriage? It doesn't look like a Oh, they look couple. not at all. Yeah. He, he used to date Selena Gomez, and they broke up, and now that he got married like a month later. You could tell that. Oh, that's probably, he might have jumped into that. Yeah. Oh, that don't look like that's going to really work, though, does it? It doesn't. Ooh, they look miserable. They don't really look compatible. Do they have other pictures? Um, yeah, I think so. Oh, they don't look too happy. Pull a few other pictures now and see if we can glean anything else. <laughs> you know, there are people who do tarot readings on the stars. Really? And their channels really blow up. <laughs> they like predicted Michael Jackson's divorce or something else. Like they uh, read the cards for that type of stuff. There's some people who believe that Prince Williams were a celebrity that died. There's a lady who has a whole blog written about why she thinks Prince was her twin flame. Prince didn't even notice her, did he? <laughs> She's a nut. Are you serious? Yeah. That's all she got to do with her time? I just did thinking about... Today feels like Saturday. I'm so glad it's Friday. I will think about this next time I color all the cotton that comes up, man. I don't think I'm going to be doing this. I think it could be interpreted. He looks always looks depressed now, but she looks like it looks like so there's a story behind this picture. Oh, yeah, it looks like they forced marriage. That's yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. Why did he marry her so quick? How could he you have know, got trying to prove something? No, you know the Illuminati is trying to take the stock. Oh God. Who told you that? <laughs> Y'all believe that crap? <laughs> you mean the Illuminati makes them pick a spouse? <laughs> Why would they want them to pick us what? To keep up the hype going and the so gossip? 
Because you say they, they uh, sacrifice people, right? You really believe that? I mean, I, it's not hard to believe. It's, anything is possible. But there's some crazy stuff going on behind the scenes, though. Yeah, I think we need to admit that for sure. Yeah. But definitely, we can't be in denial about it. Because you can't explain the Bohemian Grove thing. What's that? I told you about that. What? There's raw footage of a bunch of diplomats, celebrities, like high power people in a place called Bohemian Grove, which is in San Francisco in the outskirts. Was Obama there? Why would they let people in there with phones no, to take? He, he was invited, and then he, he was a, repo, a famous reporter named, uh, what was his name? I forgot his name, but he was a famous reporter, and he got invited or something. So it seems really true. It's, it looks true. It's real. Who is there? You can't see it clearly, though. It's from a distance. Oh, you haven't been to one, huh? No. Your dad took me to my first concert. So expensive. Every time someone comes here to Atlanta, it's so pricey. Yeah, you're looking at about a hundred bucks easy. Yeah. You got to plan for it. You do. Your dad took me to my first concert. Where did who did he go? To? Uh, Erica Badu. Oh, really? Mm hmm Was it good? Yeah, it was good. What does she look like in person? She's beautiful. She's the same as she is on stage, a little weird. But you know, she's really pretty. A little weird? I think so. She looks a little out there. She looks kind of, you know, like hippie, hippie type. Talented though. That's for sure. So it's really how she dresses and how she does her makeup that make her look so weird sometimes. If you would just dress normally, then she would look like a different girl to you. All my curls are pretty much gone. No, dude, I don't want to hang out with you. I should probably just block his number. Why would you block him? So he just out of nowhere, huh? Yeah. He just I wants something to do. So where did you know him from again? From the rec center that I used to work at in Georgia State Campus. So he's a black kid? Yeah. So you're not, you, he doesn't seem like anybody you have not, He's really short. I'm not interested. I'm not looking for that anymore. I don't blame you. <laughs> when you're by yourself, there's no confusion. Is a bit off the beaten path. The, yeah, especially the, the, the veteran dudes. He looks like somebody right out of a horror movie. I don't know how my mind conjured that up. The guy walking around with the gun. Yeah, no, he. That's what's like crazy. People who get they don't have a leg or something, so they get like a prosthetic limb. Yeah. yeah like in that know. movie with Sam Jackson, y'all were laughing at so bad. When y'all kept replaying that scene I over, and y'all <laughs> just laughed. That was it. And turned out he was the um antagonist. Yeah, yeah. He so was the nutcase. He was busy trying to find the protagonist so he could have a duel of sorts. Yeah, that was that was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, like, and but this, the, in the dream, the guy's prosthetic legs were really messed up. So he looked crazy. They were dirty and, and they were like turned the wrong way and stuff. So he was kind of limping. And then he was carrying a gun and he didn't look like he was fully there for present. He looked like like he was possessed or something. And he was carrying like this huge gun. And nobody could see him but me. That was the scary part. Mm. And all these people were outside of the movie theater. I guess they had just seen the movie and they were just kind of sitting around bunch of people. I 
Everybody else was just standing there, huh? Yeah. That's a long walk. Why yeah. didn't you call Lyft? It was dark. I don't know. It was it a was dream. It was dark, too. And the street lights were starting to go out. It was just crazy. All right. Let me see. Oh. Now, could you get my phone from over there, please? Yeah. Off the thing. Let's just see if she has texted me at all. Oh, I got another booking. Shanita's coming to see me. Yay, my girl. Shanita, when she book an appointment? That's the lady from the uh, the YouTube channel. That's my girl. When's she coming to see me? It's October the 9th. Okay, so that's next week. Okay, girl. What's good, everybody? We're Tunisia Locks. And I am Tunisia Ali. And... I am going to do this video on the shampoo that I use to wash my hair. I make my own shampoo out of this Dr. Bronner's 18-in-1 Hemp Lavender Pure Castile Soap. I've been using this now for, I guess, six years. And honestly, I am going to credit this and what I do with it to my tremendous growth. And when you see how fast my hair has grown, and I'm gonna, as I begin to put up more videos, you'll see how fast it's really been growing. Now, it may look long here, and trust me guys, y'all know I'm chronic about Lent. I was sitting in the car today, picking Lent, okay? This is crazy, but I've had a knee on the steering wheel with an elbow holding the other side of the wheel, riding down the street, catching lint. Now, you know I washed my hair last night and I did those curls, right? So you already know, when you wash your hair and you have lint, the lint starts to show up even more, although it's easier to pull out. But I spotted some white pieces of lint and I thought, okay, where's my camera so that I can show my beloved followers what goes on with the lint. Oops, look at that, I think. And this is not even a lint video. Can you see that? This has to be dealt with. <laughs> I may be the only one that can see it, but that's good enough for me. So anyway, we're doing this shampoo thing. Now, if you look at my hair, it's gotten long. And bear in mind, folks, look at that. Bear in mind that I have really abuse my hair in some senses with this lint and pulling stuff out because today even you can see what happens to my ends when I pull the lint out right this is what happens I don't care because I got to get that lint out we paid money for this hair it needs to look right and I can't have lint in it but my hair has continued to grow it's very strong I think I mentioned how often I color my hair although I haven't colored it in the last few months I'm going to let the color, leave the color thing alone because it dried it out some. I'm going to leave it alone. But I was coloring my hair on the regular. And I don't put a lot of energy and effort into my hair. I do two things regularly that I know have saved my hair. I formulate a synergistic oil blend for my hair, which I'll do in another video. And I'll shampoo my hair with this particular blend that I'm going to show you today. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is what was strength in my hair. I uh, have, a, have a lovely lock sister who wrote a comment and asked me to show you guys yesterday how I am Ooh. doing this. And so I said, 
said, well, what the heck? Now, you must think I ran out of my shampoo last night. Go out and get me some more so I can show my sister how to do this. And my brothers, too. I got a couple comments from brothers. So this is a channel for sisters and brothers. So I got the Pure Castile soap, right? And essentially, this is soap that is free of all of those harmful, harmful chemicals and crap that the lovely U.S. has distorted our, not only our food supply, but our beauty supply products, our water, and every damn thing else that they do that is so counterproductive to human life and prosperity. So what you want to do, this soap goes a long way, and the interesting dynamic is this soap, guys, is very foamy. When you put this soap in, you know you, you it foams up, unlike something without those dangerous uh, additives. But you will fill up a bottle. This bottle is about 16 ounces. The same amount as this almond oil. So you fill it up about a third of it. Okay, so if this is approximately a third. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is another third, and that's another third. So about a third you're going to fill with, you know, this liquid Castile soap. They have it in all flavors. I can't take peppermint. It messes up my tummy, and I just don't like it. So I got lavender. I love lavender. I put probably a tablespoon of almond oil in, oil in there. Now, I recommend that you also put a little bit of jojoba oil because I mentioned to you before, jojoba oil is a detangler. These are conditioning. Now, there are some essential oils that you need to make sure you put in here. And when I say essential oils, I really mean essential, essential oils because we're using essential oils. This is a fatty oil. This is not a fatty oil. This is a fatty oil, okay? Essential oils, which are not fatty oils, we're going to use clove. This is your best friend. If you are Noah and you have to get on the ark, after you take your cayenne pepper, your garlic, and your lavender, you take cloves next. It is antifungal, anti-inflammatory, uh, and it's anti, uh, it's antiviral too. It's also antibacterial. This is for the stuff that happens up in here that gets yucky smelling and this is for the days that you wash your hair, and they say a lot of times locks can hold moisture, and if you don't properly dry them, you can actually begin to grow mold from the inside out, which you don't want. So I have clove oil here, and these are supposed to be therapeutic grade oils, folks, but you know, you got to know where you're sourcing your stuff from. I got these from Amazon, but I use a lot of now oils for my other, like when I make other blends for other things, whether it be acne or... Um, scars, but those oils I make sure if I'm putting them, them on my skin directly or I have to ingest them, which I seldom recommend, that they are really high grade oils. So, clove oil is the one that I put, because I'm going to fill this up with shampoo, about 35 drops of clove oil in here. Now, clove oil is very, very strong. The synergistic blend of these oils will be extremely strong. I'm going to take your rosemary. Now, you know rosemary is excellent for growth, follicle health, scalp health. It's very good. So you want to put 15 drops of this in. I'm running out. That's okay. A few oils, a few more here or there, no biggie. Lavender as well, up there with cloves, about 30 drops. You know, this is one of the oils that's more harmless than the others. Cloves is very caustic, so you have to be careful because it can irritate your skin. Um, okay. You also want a little bit of cinnamon leaf. Antibacterial. Not a necessity. Not a necessity. Don't feel bad if you don't have the cinnamon leaf. Okay? You want 10 drops of cinnamon leaf. All right? Remember the synergistic result will be greater than the sum of its parts. Now, I'm also going to put in a little bit of clary sage. Okay? 
strap to this. Don't you love the way I'm giving you a specific number of drops? You guys want to know if I'm a chemist? The answer is no. <laughs> Buyer beware. I'm just joking. The infamous geranium. Good for so many things. Restimulating growth of cells. Great for collagen building, for scars, for so many things. But it is a strong smell. I love it, but, well, I love it to an extent for what it does, but it's very strong smelling. But you're using this for shampoo, so it's not going to be too overwhelming, okay? You want to put 10 drops of this in. This is very powerful. Now, um, I used to put carrot oil in my blend. Carrot oil is pure, pure Egyptian carrot oil. Amazing for the hair, guys. Amazing for the skin but it smells so strong. It's so potent that people will smell you when you go into a place. It's not so bad in the shampoo, but you definitely can't put it in your hair oil. But even for the shampoo, it's pretty strong. It is very strong, even if you use two or three drops. So I'm, I'm leaving that out. And the last thing I'm gonna put in here is gonna be what I like for the smell. Now I love the clove has a beautiful smell and it glows well with most citrusy kinds of oils. But I like citrusy oils. Bergamot is good for the hair anyway. So this is a combination that I mix of a little bit of bergamot, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of mandarin, and a little bit of orange. You can just go with, you know, lemon. You know lemon is good for the hair, okay? So you wanted to use lemon or you wanted to use a little bit of orange or don't overdo the orange though because it will irritate the scalp. So I'm gonna put in here, I like the smell of it, okay? That's really why I'm using this, 15. again is for your mm, that smells very good and you're going to fill the rest up with water and you're going to shake very well okay and remember I said if you have any jojoba a tiny bit of jojoba would be nice your hair will love that decide that you want to use a tad bit more of the clove, you can't go wrong. When he puts his head in your hair or she puts her head in your hair, it's always going to smell good. Okay, no matter what's going on outside or what happened at the gym. You have a nice smell and you can judge if you want to add a little bit more of clove Remember, the clove is my primarily not only for its scent, I need a little more citrus, uh, five, about five, six more drops. You will judge the outcome based upon your particular preference. And that's really it, guys. When you wash your hair with this and your hair is fully wet, and you put just a tiny bit, maybe two drops here, two drops here, three here, a couple here, a couple over there, you're going to suds up really, really good. And then you put a little bit on your, on your, um, yes, it smells good, on the actual hair. So really good. This will last you for a long time. And remember, the original container was this, but you don't use this in a concentrated way. Three parts of one part uh, shampoo. Three parts sh uh, water, one part shampoo. So this is what you got, folks. You got a wonderful recipe that will cut back on scalp funkiness, that will groom your scalp, keep your follicles and your um, hair hygiene up to par. It's going to maximize growth, okay? Believe me when I tell you it'll maximize growth and thickness and it will not interfere with your locks. Now, obviously, if you're early in your lock journey, then you need to make sure that you're banding when you wash. Please band. I don't care what they say. Please take the time to band. And when I banded, in the beginning, I was banding like about this much hair, flat all the way down. Okay, had some short pieces in there, made sure I got them in there. Flat it nice and loose. Nice and loose, looser than this maybe. And then I put my band on there. Okay, and then you know as you're 
on your scalp. They said don't scrub. I got to scrub my scalp, people. I scrub my scalp. You see my hair is healthy. I didn't suffer any casualties. Did this thing here. And then when I got it soapy, I did this. Back and forth, back and forth. And then I rinse. With this shampoo, you'll find you don't need to use three and four washes. One will, you'll find your hair is not going to be that dirty. It's not. This stuff will keep your hair clean because remember it's antibacterial, it's antimicrobial, uh, it's anti-everything. Okay? But that's pretty much it, everybody. I think I said everything I needed to say. The next thing I'm going to do on the next video tomorrow is just show you the oil that I use in my hair because, again, that is very, very key. And the oil, it travels, guys, because yesterday my hair was looking crazy and dry outside. Remember? I didn't want to get the oil on my shirt today. But before I left, all I did was do a little here, and I did this and worked it down. And my hair is a lot, has a little more sheen. Oh, my gosh, you see those grays? They say the grays will fight this uh, lock. I don't know what that's going to be like. But anyway, you don't need a lot of oil. We're going to go over my recipe for oil tomorrow. It's a little bit different than this, but not major. I hope that you got something out of today's video and I hope that you will stay tuned for the next video where I will show you one of my recipes for the essential oil center discipline that I use to make these locks grow really long and again I'll put the video up that will give you some snippets of what my hair looked like over time and how it got to the point that it's at now where it's really long and it's, it's really healthy and I think I told you guys I had never lost a lock, not one, never lost a lock. If I have any issues with uneven locks, it's because of what I did to myself and what I keep doing to my locks. And it's working for me, so I'm going to keep on doing it. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've never lost a lock, and my hair is very healthy. It's very healthy. I don't have any locks that are thinning. I don't have any locks that um, you know have thinned in certain places they're all even even the ones I fooled around with in terms of you know a thinning that would happen to where you see some people's locks it looks like in the middle the middle part is so thin it's just going to break off I don't have any locks like that and again I'm going to say it's because of the regimen that I use and also the fact that I don't overwash my hair I don't put any other chemicals in my hair